Who watched NXT 2.0 last night? Raise your hand. Huh? Anybody? Oh, man. That Joe Gacy, Ron Breaker deal. I got over a dozen emails in the span of about 10 minutes when that show ended about how preposterous this was. And uh, for you, for those of you that didn't see it, I mean, uh, Braun Breaker has stolen the Hall of Fame ring of Rick Steiner, who is now confirmed to be the, the father of Braun Breaker. So uh, Braun's running all over trying to find this, this ring and... First, we've got uh, Joe Gacy, video walls everywhere, him going, ah, ha, ha, and he's, and then they go backstage, and they literally did the uh, thing from WCW where Braun Breaker looks in the mirror, and Joe Gacy's behind him, and he spins around, and there's no Joe Gacy. Somehow, there's a hall of mirrors in the uh, NXT. I don't know what that's all about. And then, uh, and then later, like, he's, the whole show, he's looking for Joe Gacy. And so finally in the show, Joe Gacy shows up, and he's he's on he's up in the thing. What do they call that? The uh, nest, whatever the whatever bird's nest or whatever. Cat bird, yeah. So he's up in this nest, and he goes, uh, "I'm here." It's like Braun Breaker's so angry that uh, he starts storming up to the the crow's nest or crow's nest. He starts storming up to the crow's nest, and uh, Joe Gacy goes, "Hold on a second, buddy, calm down." So you'll never guess what Braun Breaker does. He calms down. So uh, Joe Gacy says, you know, I know you really want this ring, but uh, I'm going to make you a deal. No tricks, he says. He goes, I will give you this ring back. And all I ask is that you give me a championship match in two weeks at uh, NXT, uh, you know, Busted Open or whatever it's called. Spring Breaker. Spring Break In or something. So, uh... Braun Breaker goes, all right, you're on. So the tension has been lifted. So Joe Gacy he takes the ring off, takes the ring off. He he puts it down the shirt of, uh, of Braun Breaker, and then they uh, they look at each other, and then Joe Gacy says. I mean, it, none of this matters. Some dumb line, he goes, I got one other thing, and then he, he shoves Braun Breaker. You got to take a leap of faith. Yeah, leap of faith. Braun Breaker falls off the uh, crow's nest. You just see him, you know, he disappears off screen. And then you hear, <laughs> clang! And uh, and then... You, mi- you miss the announcer going, the only sound from the announcer. Ooh! And then uh, from there is bizarre. I'm, I'm like 99.9% sure from that point forward, it's all pre-tape because you never see the crowd again. You see a, a shot looking up at Joe Gacy, but you don't see any people. And then you they have another shot of Braun Breaker. Of course, he's laying flat on cement like he fell off the thing and landed on cement. And, uh, you know, at this point, I'm thinking, all right, it's dumb. But, I mean, what's everyone so angry about? Like, it's just a stupid angle. No sooner should I think. Then Braun Breaker is laying on the cement, and all of a sudden from around him are a dozen druids. Druids! In 2022 in Florida, there are a bunch of druids. I could believe that there. And all the druids, they lift up their, their things or whatever, and they start to cover the body of Braun, he goes, ah! And that's how the show goes off the air. Get that, off me! Get off me! That, that was stupid. And that's how the show went off the air. And uh, you know what? I, I couldn't help but uh, I couldn't help but notice. What's that? Well, you remember when uh, Vince McMahon did that interview with uh, McAfee? And he goes, you know, sometimes we, we make mistakes. By the way, it doesn't mention a mistake he ever made, just in general. You know, sometimes we make mistakes, and what we do is we, we learn from those mistakes. As we said, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't help but think that, you know, they had this guy, the fiend, and they did a whole bunch of absolutely god awful, horrible television with this guy. And uh, do you remember what happened to the fiend? Got released. Got fired. Yeah. yeah. So then he's gone. 
And then they decide, you know what we're going to do is we're going to make a female fiend. And so Alexa Bliss is the new fiend after they fired the first guy. And uh, some of the absolute dumbest, stupid stuff you ever saw on television. She's teleporting and all this other crap. And, uh, and I can't help but notice I have not seen her for a long time. She She vanished. And then they did a bunch of equally stupid vignettes. And then she had one match. And then she vanished again. And we haven't seen her. And now, you, of course, you know, you go online and, uh, you know, I don't know. But the rumors are that she's she's unhappy. Gee, I wonder why. Why would she be unhappy? Oh, maybe, you know, she did six weeks of vignettes and then they had no plan. And then she had one match and then vanished. And then she wasn't even on WrestleMania. I wonder if it could possibly be true that she would be frustrated. But anyway, that's two now. That's two Fiend-related gimmicks involving horrible television, where the uh, you know the antagonist here first the fiend and then Alexa. It's like then they it's just like they're gone. It's like a curse. Well now now someone's decided. Well we need another fiend. It'll be Joe Gacy. He'll laugh and he'll teleport and he'll be in mirrors even though he's not there. And I'm like, bro, how many honestly? How many times are we going to do this stupid crap and not figure out that it sucks and that nobody wants to see the individuals involved? They never get over. And it's like they're cursed when they get trapped with this stupid. How many times do we have to do this? Am I wrong? Forever. Because they make movies. No, they don't make movies. This is what they say. This is what they believe. This is what Vince believes. And I, come on, look, the, the cinematics, the, all the things that we've gotten, Vince loves this stuff. And when sometimes when it hits, it's really good. <laughs> Other times it's not. And to be honest, it hasn't hit all that often for me, no matter who is doing it, whether it be Alexa Bliss or Bray Wyatt or now Joe Gacy. How do these people get control of all the production? That's another thing, too. Wrestlers taking over the production and Joe Gacy being able to just, you know, run wild in NXT. Isn't that place small enough where you can actually, you know, do something? But then again, there's carnage all over this show. There's little mini movies taking place all over the place. Look at the heavy handedness of Tony D'Angelo and every single mafia movie stereotype being brought out in very short order in this battle against Legato de Fantasma, right? I mean, that's what this whole show is about. That's what they like to do. That's where this show is more like the main roster than it ever has been because they love doing this stuff and the people be damned. <laughs> you know, whether this is good for Joe Gacy or not, doesn't matter. We have an idea. We have a plan. If it doesn't work out, eh, yeah, then we go on to the next one. That's what they do. I'm not surprised by this at all. Was it good? No. Is this what I want to see Braun Breaker doing? No. But in their mind, is this readying him for the main roster and all the sports entertainment that he's going to be doing? Yeah. I guess in their mind, they do. I don't even think they think that. I think they just came up with a stupid idea. They did a challenger for Braun Breaker, and they looked at that whole roster. And were like, you know you know who's going to be a great challenger for Braun Breaker? Joe Gacy. Where's Powder? I don't know. He wasn't there. Huh. Maybe he watched this thing and he was like, I can't be involved in this. I'll go back to football. <laughs> I'd rather do anything. And, you know, I got to yeah. gotta give the guy credit. I mean, you know, Braun Breaker, I mean, low bar, but he was fine in these segments. I mean, he was an angry, he was an angry guy looking around for a ring. It wasn't this horrible acting that we see every time, you know, Persia Parada and uh what's her face all, Indy, all of them indy hartwell indy on the screen and, yes i mean it was it was like the the Look. stuff was bad but i mean he did fine okay now there's an incident last week where i lost my mind and uh attempted some gory self-mutilation Trini, stop that no i don't believe my own eyes anymore what, what i what, what i think i see <laughs> they're telling me i didn't see all right <laughs> but that's what happened Okay, so seven days ago, seven days ago, he shaved his own head. He goes back here. I swear to God, his hair's back again. Well, like nothing happened. I'm trying to hang on. I'm trying 
desperately to grip on reality. And every time I, I'm, every time I think I'm there, every time I think I'm safe and stable, Duke Hudson's hair changes again. His motivation changes again. Something about Dante Chen. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.